Why does it... It itches. The legendary horror manga creator Junji Ito is back again to haunt your senses as Netflix brings you an anthology series capturing 20 of his masterpieces. Junji Ito Maniac, Japanese Tales of the Macabre delivers one shock after another, and the episode titled Mold delivers a brief glimpse into the unexplained world of otherworldly terror. In this video, we will break down the episode and try to simplify the supernatural entity and be warned about a few spoilers along the way. Exploring the plot, how Mold takes charge of a house and those living. The story titled Mold has been adapted from the seventh volume of Horror World of Junji Ito, Slug Girl, and it tells the creepy Lovecraftian story that leaves plenty for your imagination. The story starts off with a young man named Akasaka, who has returned home after a year of staying overseas for work. He hopes to find some peace and quiet in the familiar terrain of his house, but there is something that is bugging him. A family was living there during his absence, and soon more is learned about the temporary temporary tenants. It was his teacher from middle school and his family, and he had unwillingly allowed them to stay in his new house while he was gone. He had warned them against making any changes to the structure, but immediately after entering the house, a foul smell greets him. Akasaka is disgusted when he finds out rotten remains of food and garbage all across the house, which is littered beyond recognition. As he rushes to the washroom to throw up, he discovers the first signs of the real problem in the house. The entire bathtub is covered with bubbling mold, and there is something particularly unnerving about the structure and formation of the mold, which seem almost lifelike. Seiji, the man who had convinced him to allow the old teacher to live with his family, arrives and he seems extremely hesitant to enter. He apologizes for not clearing out the mess before Akasaka arrived, but they are both yet to know the true extent of the mold infestation. A brief flashback shows how Akasaka had to give in when the old teacher begged him to allow him to live there during his absence. Their house had burned down, and the family had taken shelter in a relative's place. There is something unnatural and creepy about the family as well. His wife, a young girl, and an infant, all of whom look like they are straight from the land of the dead. Back in the present day, Akasaka wakes up late at night, and he is shocked to notice some strange changes in the house. The walls seem to be covered more in the mold than they previously were, and there are strange bumps in the wall, which he swears didn't exist before. He screams in despair as he laments the terrible state of his new house, and the next morning, he confronts Seiji yet again. This time, he is determined to know more about the kind of life that the family led that led to such a condition. Seiji tries to shy away from the questions, but he ultimately admits to a terrifying experience. One day, while he was visiting the family, he observed the baby crawling on the floor. The baby was entirely covered in bumpy mold, and so was the little girl, and they both had an otherworldly, eerie expression on their faces that made Seiji go away immediately. He claims that the house is probably infected by some unknown form of mold, and it wouldn't be safe for Akasaka to stay there any further. Seiji also agrees to let him stay at his place for a time being, but the owner's troubles are far from over. As Akasaka heads up the stairs, presumably to get his stuff to leave, we see a terrifying sight. The walls are entirely covered with mold, which has grown to take the shape of bulbous roots, or tentacles. There is a clear squelching sound, and as Akasaka tries to make his way in, he is shocked to find the baby and the little girl entwined by the mold. Their lifeless bodies seem to be consumed by the monstrous mold formations, and the same is the fate of the other family members. Suddenly, he feels something itchy about his skin which we can see has also been infected by the mold. The episode ends with him sitting amidst the heaps of mold, with a manner that indicates he has lost his sanity and only waiting for the inevitable. Exploring the origins of the sentient mold monster. In typical Junji Ito fashion, we are not spoon-fed the logic behind the unnatural circumstances. The mold infestation clearly began during the stay of the family, but there is no clear indication to suggest that they were the ones to bring this evil into the house. This is not some ordinary mold, and we are calling it sentient because it almost has a mind of its own. It develops and grows so rapidly that within the day it engulfed the entire house. The narrative suggests that the mold probably gained strength after consuming the family 
family members, and poor Akasaka is soon about to strengthen it further by becoming the next prey. The mold could be of some alien origin, although considering the unusual behavior and appearance of the entire family as they begged for the house, some kind of cult activity cannot be ruled out either. That would explain why the family never escaped, why they still had time, and allowed the baby and the little girl to be consumed by the mold monster. It could be some evil ancient creature brought into the world by some ritual performed by the old teacher, who was extremely pleased to have a huge house serve as the host for the creature. The mold covering the house was probably being controlled by a single entity, and it was a genuinely scary sight to watch the mold squelch and bubble, with black goo splattering out every time Akasaka pressed or stepped on one. It will certainly remind you of some of Lovecraft's tentacle monsters, and it wouldn't be too unlikely for the creature to have a similar origin. Whatever be the actual theory behind the sentient mold monster, it certainly gave us a phobia of dirt and garbage. Thanks to Junji Ito, our house will be crystal clear from now onward. Marvelous Verdict, Terrors of a Messy Home Redefined. You might have some trouble braving your way through the episode if you have some form of OCD. The steadily worsening mold condition is brilliantly created with a damp and creepy ambience inside the house, and the pages of the comic book come alive in this thrilling adaptation. Let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the episode, and also tell us about your take on the mold infestation or the true origins of this vile entity. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be be safe. Thanks, everyone.